Do you know where a log and SDF file can exchange data? Do you know what is bank annotation? Do you know there is a large part of the SDF file that do not communicate with Verilog? Let's start our journey to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. First, we will introduce the concept of SDF versus Verilog mapping to you. Next, we will talk about what is the SDF back annotation. Next, we will directly jump to the mapping of SDF construct versus Verilog constructs for delay components. Next, we will exemplify whatever we are mapping here. Next, we will go further deep and do the mapping from SDF to the Verilog for the timing check constructs. Next, we will exemplify whatever mapping we have done here. Next, we will go in vivid detail of SDF versus spec params correlation in Verilog to an example. Next, we will talk about the situation when we have multiple SDF file. What will happen to all the mapping that we are doing here? So, if whatever we have talked in this section is dealing with a single SDF file. Now, if in picture or in real design there are multiple SDF files, then what we will do or what the tool will follow and what will be the end result. So, we will talk on that. So, that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction. SD files contain timing values for specify path delays, spec param values, timing check and interconnect delays. So all these things are there in the SDF file. For your information, we already have a full episode on SDF file, how it is constructed, what are the internal parts and different syntaxes we have thoroughly discussed and the link of that particular episode is provided in the description of this video. Please go ahead and watch it in case you have zero knowledge on SDF file. Verilog back annotation is the process by which the timing values from SDF file update specify path delays, spec param values, timing constraint values and interconnect delays. What is a back annotation? Back annotation generally is a process where we have a netlist and in netlist we add some values to different nodes or different parts whatever is applicable as per the tool through which we are simulating. So this is sometimes called Verilog back annotation and since the back annotation is done through the SDF we sometimes call it the SDF back annotation. Rather, if we call it as SDF and Verilog back annotation, then that, that will be much more proper. The term SDF annotator refers to the any tool capable of back annotating SDF data into a Verilog simulator. So this is an annotator tool. Not all tools are capable. Generally, some tools are there which can do it and the part of the tool or the part of the source code of that tool that does it is called the annotator. That means it can annotate SDF values into the Verilog values provided it is into the exhaustive list of the mapping, not outside the mapping. Mapping we will discuss in further slides. So wait for that. SDF files may also contain other information which is completely irrelevant to the Verilog simulation. So all these data will not be picked up in this mapping or we will not talk about them here. So that's why I have told you we have a full episode on SDF. Link is in the description. Go ahead and watch so that you will have a clear idea on SDF syntaxes and details. All constructs unrelated to Verilog timing shall be ignored without any warnings. So this is very straightforward because which are unrelated and are which are irrelevant should be skipped without any warning, without any message. Otherwise, the end user will get confused. That means you who is doing the SDF Verilog back annotation will get confused. The timing values in SDF usually come from application specific integrated circuit that is ASIC delay calculation tools that take advantage of connectivity technology and layout geometry information. The general information easy to understand. We are moving to the next point. Any Verilog timing value for which the SDF file does not provide a value shall not be modified during the back annotation process and its pre annotation value should be unchanged. So, so we have a mapping table and there will be a subset of values in actual simulation. They will get back annotated. Anything not that list in the back annotation list should remain unchanged. Otherwise, it will create disruption. So this should be there in the annotator tool and this method should be followed there and as a designer, you should verify verify that there is nothing changed which is not intended to change. Here we are done with the introduction. Let's move on to the next. SDF back annotation. So here we'll go in detail of the back annotation process. So let's start. 
HDF timing values appear within a cell declaration. So this is a syntax inside the HDF file. So those who have not watched the HDF episode, I am again emphasizing, please go ahead and watch the episode on HDF file. Link you can find in the video description of this video. This section may contain more than one delay, time check and label. So these are syntaxes that are contained within the HDF file. The delay section contains propagation delay values for specified path and interconnect delays. So these are delay which you can find and which you can back annotate. The timing check section contains timing check constraint values. The label section contains new values for spec params. So from all this section, you have the HDF values. Those values will get back annotated. That means inserted. That means inserted into the Verilog file by the annotator tool, not your Verilog simulator tool. One thing to mention here, your Verilog simulator tool can be an annotator tool if it has the code to annotate. Back annotation into Verilog is done by matching HDF constructs into the corresponding Verilog declarations. So there should be a mapping and there should be a proper matching. Otherwise, thing will jumbled up and the code will goof up. Then the existing Verilog timing values are replaced by respective values from the HDF file. When annotating delay constructs, the HDF annotator looks for specified paths where the names and conditions match. When annotating timing check constructs, the HDF annotator tool looks for the timing checks of the same type where the names and condition match. So these are the routines that go in the annotation process where it checks, matches and maps and then picks up from the mapped values and back annotate into the Verilog file in the respective variables or respective regions of the Verilog code. Here we are done with the back annotation concept. Let's move on to the next slide. HDF to Verilog mapping for delay components. So here we will give a table and directly talk about the mapping. So here is our table. In left hand side we have HDF construct. In right hand side we have Verilog annotation zone or construct. So it could be a zone where the values will annotate it or directly a Verilog const. So again before proceeding I am again mentioning please go ahead and watch the HDF video. The link is provided in the video description of this video. That will help you to understand the HDF construct like this and you will get the meaning. So here we have path pulse and where it will get annotated conditional and non-conditional specify path pulse limit. Again there is a percentage version of the path pulse that is path pulse percent that will get annotated in the conditional and non-conditional specify path pulse limits. There is a construct called IO path. It will get annotated in the conditional and non-conditional specify path delay and pulse limit. So here this is delay and pulse limit. IO path with retain conditional and non-conditional specify path delays or pulse limits retain may be ignored. So here this particular construct helps to ignore condition with IO path. Condition specify for path with delay and pulse limit. So here is the straightforward mapping. Let's move on to the next slide. We continue our table here. Then we have the condition, then IO path, then retain. What will happen in the Verilog? Conditional specify paths, delays, path limits, retain may be ignored. Here we also can use the retain for ignorance. Condition else IO path if there is none. And then if we append the IO path and then retain, retain may be ignored. These are the syntaxes that you have to tally the SDF file and your Verilog design file side by side and then you will be able to understand. Wait, we have some examples here for easy understanding. You're done here let's move on to the remaining part of the table here for delay this is the final part and we have completed here the delay part so here is a device where it annotates all specify paths to the module outputs if no specify paths all primitive driving modules out so these are few advanced things you have to have your sdf and verilog side by side to understand and compare right next we have device then port instance if port instance is a module instance all specify paths to module outputs if no specify paths all primitives during the module outputs if port Port instance is a module instance output all specify paths to that module out. And if no specify path, all primitive driving that module out. This way the mapping should be there in between the SDF constructs versus the Verilog annotation zone or constant for the delay components. We are done here. Let's move on to the next slide. 
here we see the example of the so far things we have talked about so here it's a hdf construct right and here we have actual values so io path then cell then z out 1.3 1.7 i have explained all these terms hdf file episode so please go ahead and watch that description of this video contains the url of the video and here in verilog how we see we can have a this kind of relation condition where you can see that all these values will be annotated back so these values whatever we are getting here will get annotated here next we have a more detailed one condition then mode then io path then cell then z out then this values how it will get right there are two ways a positive logic and a negative logic so here if condition is there then we have this value and if this condition is there we have this value in this way we can get the values back annotated in the parallel similarly this one is there you can see we have both the negative and positive logics here again and these values will go into this this way the things will get mapped in your Verilog code so you have to be very careful when you are seeing or mapping it back so that requires an expert skill set not a beginner or novice level skill set and you can consider this episode as an expert episode not as a novice or beginner episode so at that level you can do the mapping and do the back annotation here we are done with the example let's move on to the next section sdf to Verilog mapping for timing check here are the things set up so here we are we have sdf constructs in the left hand side and right hand side we have the very log annotation zone or constant this is much more straightforward than previous type of mapping this for the timing check we have the mapping setup time that is v1 so we have already predefined system functions here or system tasks here here it will pick up this system function or task correspondingly for hold we have these functions for setup hold here we have all these functions for recovery we have all these functions and for removal we have all these library functions available in Verilog those will be used for mapping and through these functions or system tasks right you will be able to that are declared within these constructs will be back annotated into the Verilog through this so here we are done with the mapping let's move on to the next section we continue the table here and we have this particular constants that is recrem and that is we can map it to the recovery removal recrem for skew we have skew for time skew we have time skew for full skew we have full skew and for width we have width so all these sdf construct can be easily back annotated through the verlog predefined library function or tasks so here we are again done let's move on to the next slide here we continue our table and this is the final page so here you can see this is the period and which will be mapped to the Verilog system function or task period for no change we have no change so this is you can see that for the timing checks it's very straightforward to use the system function or task we are done here for the mapping so let's move on to the next slide we have talked about the mapping now let us see some examples for the timing checks in left hand side we have hdf constructs and right hand side in right hand side we have the verilog annotation zone or construct you can see setup hold etc here and we have the complete uh, hdf syntax and what it will call will call the setup hold system function or task and this way we can use its syntactical form to map all these values and similarly this this would go here again i am saying that there are two modes that is a positive logic and a negative logic that is controlled here so you can use those as per your need setup hold data Passage of clock and we have the rest of the sdf construct so here what it will call the system function setup and hold and setup and hold again i am saying there is a positive and negative logic here mode and bang mode and in this fashion it will be uh, the syntax will be written and the sdf values will be mapped here in the verilog so here you can see the pausage and negage is here and pausage and negage is here so here we have seen only the pausage but however in actual practice we can have both pausage and negage and here we have the third one setup and hold and we have some conditions here here you can see again there is a positive and negative logic here and you can see pausage or negage is also here and in similar to the previous examples you can see it is uh, taken care well in the syntax and all these sdf construct can be mapped very well to the verilog annotation zone or construct since this is a very advanced topic it will take for you some time to understand and implement all these things into your verilog code or sdf code as a beginner you can have a touch base so that when you are working in a company once you see all these things you can come back to the video and you can have the correlation quickly and do your task in the working environment so here we are done let's move on to the next slide here in this slide we will talk about the sdf and spec params the correlation in Verilog. 
here is our SDF code and in right hand side we have our Verilog code and in SDF code you can see these are the basic constants right and here is our variable d high is 60 and d low is 40. In the right hand side Verilog code you can see that here we have defined the spec param d high and d low with initial value 0 and that will be used in the code and here you can see d high and d low are getting used in the always block. So when this annotation is done so this value this will go to here and this value will go to here so this way things will get back annotated the verilog code simulation will start with the initial zero values and because of the annotator tool these two values will be back annotated here. So this is a very simple thing that to understand where the speak params play a good role in back annotation from SDF into the Verilog. We have also have speak param episode here itself in this Verilog series. Please go into the playlist and find that episode for detailed understanding of the speak params. And also I am providing the link direct link of the video in the description of this video so that you can understand the speak params properly and without a glitch. So here we are done. Let's move on to the next slide dealing with multiple SDF files. So this is the last slide of this presentation and here we will talk about the real-time scenario because in ASIC design we have multiple SDF files may one may be from pre-layout version one may be from post-layout version or maybe some from one team and another team one team is analyzing one part of the code another team is analyzing another part of the code what will happen in that real scenario when there are multiple SDF files before this slide whatever we have talked about we have a single SDF file and we have a single Verilog file where we are doing the mapping and changes. Now here what will happen? This will happen. Yes, more than one SDF file can be back annotated into the Verilog code. Each call to the SDF annotated task annotates the design with timing information from an SDF file. Now what will happen when there are multiple SDF files? Annotated values modify increment or override that is absolute values from the earlier SDF files. That means when we use two SDF files in sequence, some values were annotated from this file. If we have similar values here, they will get either modify that is increment or overwrite that is absolute value from the SDF file. This can happen. That means either modification will be done or overwrite will be done. Next, different regions of a design can be back annotated from different SDF files by specifying the region's hierarchy scope in the second argument to the SDF annotation. This is what a real scenario is. This is what I was saying that a design is done by different teams. Different part of the design is done by different teams. This is the real time scenario because here different design teams are dealing with different parts of the design and they are giving different SDFs. The when that SDFs come to the RTL designer, what happens that you try to back annotate all of them and here we have our verilog code and here we have a region here we have a region from sdf file some values will get annotated here from another sdf file will get annotated here so we have already talked about when we are facing the modify or the override situation in addition if there are multiple blocks and they have different sdf files they will be separately annotated in sequence or maybe in a simultaneous way however they all all those values will get incorporated in the verilog file through the backend and with the SDF annotate construct. Now, my suggestion to you is to consult your latest Verilog LRM and since now Verilog is a part of the system Verilog, please consult the latest system Verilog LRM that is language reference manual for latest and up-to-date syntaxes on the SDF annotate or anything related to the SDF back annotation. So here we are done talking what will happen with the multiple SDF files which happen in actual ASIC design. We are done here. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. In case you have some dislikes, put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.